Hey everyone, welcome back to Play for Essence Podcast. It has been quite a while, but I'm back. Um, today I have something to talk about. Um, may or may not be interesting, but it is, or seems like, uh, a common topic right now. So, I mean, let's just get into it, right? You've probably seen the title, so I'm sure you know what this is about, but... As with many things, the internet has once again opened my eyes to what could be. You know, first came sexuality, then there was gender, and now ADHD. I know most of us are probably on TikTok. I mean, be honest with yourself, how many of us are on ADHD TikTok? Because that seems fairly common. Social media has made it so easy to get information about things, and people seem to be being, seem to be very transparent about their symptoms and things that they experience and ADHD tends to be like one of the biggest I mean it really could just be that I am personally on ADHD TikTok but I've had this conversation with so many different people and a lot of us have similar experiences now I say this with caution because like when we when we become familiar with these things and like different diagnoses um and you can ask any psychology or medical student because I'm sure they would tell you the same thing. Um, like, we're taught in school that when you're learning about all these different disorders and diseases and, and you know, you, you begin to kind of generalize um, symptoms just a bit and almost convince yourself that you may have something that you don't. But I don't, this isn't one of those things. ADHD does not seem to be one of those things. And here's the reason why. None of us want to be a wiki doctor, you know, like we're not trying to, we're not Googling what's going on and finding out that it's something way left field, right? All of this kind of gets overwhelming though, and I get it. I mean, the increase of conversations taking place about ADHD, especially on social media, really has opened the doors to so many, like it's it's opened the doors to things that so many experts on ADHD um, have been saying, and that is literally that it's often undiagnosed, especially in adults, but also it's missed in young girls because the symptoms, they just don't look the same across the board. They're so different, um, and they're personal. Like, of course, we all have our own personal lives, and this is something that interferes with our, with our lives very specifically, so we don't all experience things the same. Um, I mean, like, looking into it, right? And I'm speaking about cis children because there's a lack of research on ADHD in trans children. But textbook, we know that boys often show symptoms like aggression, acting out, impulsivity, hyperactivity. That's what we associate ADHD as being, right? Like, that's, that's, that's what it is. But we know that that is what we see in boys. In young girls... There's symptoms that look much different. Literally a 180. So you have like, of course there's the, um, you know, struggle to pay attention, um, lack of focus. Um, but in, in young girls, we know that it looks like being, your symptoms are withdrawal, daydreaming, anxiety tends to be very common, difficulty in academics and academic performance, um, forgetfulness and like trouble completing tasks. And then we look at adults, and obviously it's going to look different, but it gets overlooked because it's, it it literally is, and I say mm, fairly, not like literally, because it is much more complex, but when we look at it overall, um, common experiences are disorganization, clutter, like trouble with money, impulsive spending, impulsive actions, um, you know, like adulting things, but adulting things that are fairly common in your 20s because you're still trying to figure stuff out right like we get that but here I am another adult with a new HD ADHD diagnosis that I feel as a young girl throughout school completely went unnoticed and now as an adult kind of you know the same thing is because it's just not it's just not that known and it explains so much so 
I'm just going to kind of get into it. <laughs> I mean, it really has taken me like over a year to get to a point where it became a matter of urgency. Like I literally wanted to be assessed for it mostly because of like struggling in work, but also it became, it like spilled into my personal life, my relationships, how I was feeling, my mood, all of that. Um, and just to kind of like start off the discussion by saying again that this all tends to be very personal. So this is my personal experience, um, both present and past experiences. And although those experiences are kind of like similar to some, it's really not meant to be generalized. This is very honed into like my my experiences of things that I had and kind of like what led me to recognize that this was something that I needed to look into. So like, yeah, it started on TikTok. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't see it on TikTok and then jump to go getting an assessment. Um, I had seen it on TikTok and like a lot of it resonated and then I just gave it time. I didn't jump into it. Um, and then things started to get more clear and I started to see things unfold in ways that uh, really were not working in my life. So I guess let's start from the beginning. Um, that's going to take me back to like fifth grade, so bear with me, but hopefully I can make this as quick as possible. Like I always struggled in school. I was known to be that kid. Uh, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be honest if I said that I wasn't a troublemaker because I was. Like I was the kid that passed notes. I did talk in class. I know I distracted others, but others also distracted me and it was just, it was that, right? I wasn't hyperactive. I wasn't a, like... I wasn't like doing too much <laughs> like it was just I would daydream I would daydream and I I did you know allow myself to get distracted in many ways but I guess talking overall personality you know I kind of was withdrawn I, I didn't have I had friends but I was I wasn't like super super involved I kind of was withdrawn and throughout my entire life I've been withdrawn that's why growing up as a teenager most of my life and the things that I did came from my own personal exploration through you know social media and and becoming friends with people online and things like that so it kind of was you know I, I was always kind of a withdrawn person I can say that but when it came to like school stuff I really did try my best I always did I'm like okay I don't really remember how I did specifically in school right but I know that I was not good because I would always get sent home and on my report cards would be satisfactory or average or below average which were never good like you never wanted to see that but then sometimes there's also failing or like struggle like not quite failing but on the verge or could come up whatever the case was um literally bless my parents because I can never recall them ever being very upset with me for it um but, you know, they were my parents. They would always tell me that I needed to do better and I needed to try harder. And I hated, literally hated, parent-teacher conferences. Not because I would get in trouble, but I just knew what my parents were going to hear. The same thing every single time. Bree's a good student. Sometimes they get distracting, but they are smart. Alright? Or just Bree needs to apply themselves some more. Like, I literally kid you not, so many of my teachers actually did like me like I was a good kid I was a good student but not academically um but it just so, you know like I kind of grew to maybe feel a little bit resentful not resentful I don't think that's the right word but I was just upset with the teachers and like everyone that was around me in schools especially the guidance counselor because I went in I, I went in there daily like whether because I was in trouble or just want to step in to talk a lot of it wasn't like by my own will but eventually I became close enough to her where I would just like pop in and and talk and but I was also again a little bit of a troublemaker and I did often need to go in to kind of talk about the things that I've done um but I was young so I forgive myself for that <laughs> um but yeah I just I feel like I was just let down by all these people around me because I was never evaluated and like it was brought up um, as a suggestion, I be like in fifth grade, which is why it brings me back there. Um, but life happened and that teacher unfortunately left mid school year. So then like it just fell through. It never happened. Uh, my parents were 
told that it might be something they wanted to pursue like at the school but then it never happened so you know and then I was talking to my mom about it all like recently like after my diagnosis and she reminded me that the reason why you know it never came to being assessed for it was because in sixth grade now I don't know what happened my teacher maybe had like seen my files seen my grades talked to someone but he knew the kind of student that I was so I literally sat front and center all year we had a, the classroom that we were in in sixth grade was a science lab so picture your classic little science lab science lab tables um and everything and there was the one in the front that's the teachers and then the one in the middle um that has the you know like the sink on it and everything like the, the bigger one and then behind all those are the other science lab tables i sat at my teacher's science lab desk right behind his personal computer and i sat there all year so of course my grades improved um but it literally was because like he was he was giving me like assist like i literally one-on-one -on -one. i was like kind of always being tutored because i would just struggle and he would see me struggling and then help out like he was just very he was a great he was a great teacher um but kind of enabled me to i guess get through without really being looked into you know and at that point again in sixth grade so um it had been that was kind of it that was my last year at that school anyway so back to it um yeah my grades improved and then I went to private school um and unfortunately I did struggle in private school I actually struggled a bit I did I you know I got into some trouble and I wasn't doing great my grades weren't good and um everyone else that I went to school with had been in private school their entire lives and they were much smarter than I was and um you know they just did better than me so I kind of you know stuck out in that way a bit uh and my parents listen my parents knew that I was not going to survive in public school um not because of anything other than I wouldn't have done anything I wouldn't have put work into it. I probably would have you know ended up not really caring about school not doing well and and you know I definitely wouldn't be where I am today so I thank them endlessly for that decision um but we know that private school education also means that private money doesn't go toward um like student success and learn <laughs> learning assessments it's not really something that that goes toward that is done on personal time personal finances and it, it really never even came up so but I don't think it was ever looked into at that point either um I don't know I guess I, I mean, I went to private school all throughout high school. So then, here we are in high school. We skipped several years. But I still, like, I was still challenged. Like, it, it was still definitely a struggle for me in high school. I think became even more so. So, like, I couldn't study. I literally could not pay attention well enough. I, I didn't get into much trouble, I don't recall. Like, it was high school. So, like, of course there was, like, drama. But did I get in trouble within the school system? Not that I can remember. I got detention maybe once or twice for talking in class but that was like the extent of it um but I, I just didn't do great I really didn't uh but around like the end of junior year when everyone started to talk about college is when I started to feel the pressure of like okay you know I wasn't the worst student in my grade I knew I wasn't I passed um but like my friends were talking about going to college and like everything they wanted to do and I had my own aspirations obviously I think at that point I had already decided that I wanted to go to school for psychology so I I don't know I knew that I had to get my stuff together like I literally need to get my shit together and get it together quickly so so at the end of junior year I kind of I guess picked my stuff up I had less distractions too because um I didn't have like I wasn't going on dates and like hanging out with my friends too much so that was there as well and I guess that gave me a lot more time to just focus on school but I also wasn't being like your regular high school senior so senior year here I am trying hard and I do well actually end up getting honor roll that year <laughs> but overall got into college um 
and I, I made it through college. Like, I literally did. I did the same thing I did in high school. I somehow just figured it out. I handed in work, even if it was late, and just hoped that my performance was enough. And usually it was. Like, I, I'm telling you, when I used to do assignments, I did them well. I used to get good grades, but I would do bad because I would forget to send in assignments or forget to hand stuff in, forget to study for tests, and that's where my grades used to suffer. So, yeah. So I used to just kind of figure it out. And then... I don't know I guess maybe that's why it never occurred to me again I really did do well senior year of high school and then that lasted until senior year of college um but again I literally did not study if I studied I studied a period before a test and just hoped that everything I just read stuck to my brain and again if I could pay attention in class or when I paid attention in class I knew what I needed right like all the information I would attain from class helped me pass um so I I mean I I made it I I did what I had to do and I did it and I I really think I did learn how to finesse my way to academic success because even in college I wasn't a great student I just knew how to get better grades and it was a lot of like I was applying myself differently because, you know, it's college and I actually, I was enjoying what I was learning. So that was also very helpful to kind of get good grades where they mattered. So, but it was a lot of papers and some tests, but for the most, listen, I also went to a CUNY. It was very laid back. It really, like, I remember having a science, I think it was like a biology, like a biology, but like it was like animals and like sexual it was very it was very odd it was very a very you know complex class about science and we had our science class and then we had a science lab and during the lab our teacher's assistant used to literally leave us the answers for the exams so that's the kind of foolery that I got away with um when it came to obviously my psych classes those are all things that I really 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 love to learn about and I did well because I would focus because I was interested (laughs) um but again definitely finessed my way to academic success and it I mean it worked I graduated with honors so I guess I did something right but then grad school I went from undergrad to grad school right away and it was a wake-up call I still enjoyed everything I was learning but I don't know I think paying attention wasn't even that big of a struggle but the assignments the tests I would forget I forget it I would be so bad at maintaining my assignments and sending them in on time and there's no leeway with grad school so I did I mean there's also a lot of other personal things going on at the same time that made it hard for me to put my energy and focus into grad school but um it was just it was hard you know like I I I got called in my first semester and got told that if I didn't kind of fix stuff that you know I would I would kind of get kicked out I guess um and again this was first semester so it was more so I, I was doing like the statistics courses and stuff and that stuff was kind of hard but overall I got my grades up I did well I passed and I passed with A's that semester so like it was fine but I just I I didn't know I just kept finding myself falling behind and I literally try so hard and the same thing is happening with work like not is happening but was happening um with work you know coming into a job that I've been working toward for six years but then also getting put into it without understanding like hey I really should get control over my lack of ability to keep up with the set with assignments and with deadlines and things like that I I did I I, you know fell behind in paperwork and I would even kind of struggle to focus while working which is very you know it's very sad to say it did not interfere in the in the sense that like I you know I didn't mess up or do anything like that but the amount of focus that I need like I had to keep bringing myself back and it was just so draining um to do that and I I mean at this point of course I was already like concerned with the idea that it 
may be ADHD. Um, but oh, to get myself away from like boring academics and talking about work, most like one of the most shocking discoveries I think during the assessment process was understanding that my motivation to start something and never finish or follow through. I, lit- I went from feeling defeated because I would start a project, be all in, try so hard, and at the end of it all, just end up having it fall off. Literally, this podcast being one of them, I just, I've always wanted this podcast, right? Let's stick with it. I always wanted this podcast. I still do, and I literally, I never stopped, but I would tell myself that I was going to record an episode, and then that day would come, and I would forget, and then I would say, okay, next week, and then that would come, and I would forget, and it was just a cycle to a and then it got to a point where I recognized that I wasn't able to and I just I was like okay there's a lot like I'm just I'm just too busy right now like I'll figure it out and then never got back around to it until now um and of course um I went through this entire process that I'm explaining right now during that as well so that was like I think one of the hardest things for me was understanding like coming to recognize that I was starting these things and never finishing them because even then it it wasn't brought to my attention until that question was asked of me in the assessment process um you know I've done that with many things I've done like like small parts like okay I really do enjoy photography I kind of you know I'm a freelance photographer outside of everything else and I started doing that and I started kind of you know marketing myself for it and And then that became one of my least worries and I would stop, I stopped doing that to the point where I would literally not talk about it, not have any photo shoots or anything like that for such a while. Um, And it was that. And then I was like, okay, well, let's turn photography into photography and art because I also love to do art. And I did that for a while and I started, you know, I had like a small little thing going where I was making um like little ornaments for the holiday season a few years ago and I did it and I did it and I did it and I had them all toward the end um I really started to struggle with with getting all of these pieces done and it was just I had just lost the motivation for like if I'm on track if I'm doing it consistently I'm great the second I fall off it's out of sight out of mind and that is so unfortunate because that also happens with my friendships, right? Like, you're, of course, you have to be motivated to be friends with someone. You have to put a lot of energy into it. And I would have my friends and then kind of get so drawn into everything else around me that my focus, I couldn't compartmentalize my focus into where it needed to go. It would be, I was focused on this one thing and everything else, could not. I just couldn't if it wasn't in front of me, I literally could not think about it. I wouldn't even go toward it. Or if I did, it would mean that I was dropping what I had in front of me to then go do whatever just popped into my head. Um, and I'll probably I'll explain that in a second if I can. Um, but I want to focus on this friendship thing that I'm talking about. When I say out of sight, out of mind, literally the same thing with friends. So if I didn't talk to you for a few days, it's not like I was like, oh, I don't want to be friends with this person anymore. Like they no longer are someone to me. It was just that... I would literally forget that we haven't spoken in months and to me I could jump back in and act like nothing happened but for a lot of people that's not the case and I had to learn to take the responsibility for letting someone down and being a bad friend not answering text messages not returning phone calls it was it just you know I became a bad friend for that um it just it was it's just it's a lot it's a lot I mean, I don't want to get too personal, but, like, in another sense, in an emotional sense, I guess, ADHD caused immediate, like, emotional reactions for me. So, I would literally, I, I would just react to things very emotionally. Like, that could be irritation, aggression, um, like, sadness, like, any emotion would just be so and even like good emotions right like if I was happy about something or excited about something I was like at 100 with it um not to say that was always the case there are many times where 
I could, you know, not react that way, but sometimes I would. Um, and I say sometimes, but I mean quite often. And then, like, when it came to the more negative reactions, I would regret them so quickly. Like, I, oh, it wouldn't happen. And then, like, a few minutes later, I'm just like, oh, gosh, like, why did I do that? And then it, like, would lead me to feel embarrassed. And then, also, <laughs> clumsiness, which is a huge thing. I was so clumsy as a kid, and even now, I literally was I like broke my ankle two years ago two or three years ago for doing literally the stupidest thing ever but it's just like that was so common for me I was known as someone who'd get hurt which sprained ankles torn ligaments broken fingers whatever it was always like a running joke but it's still and I mean it's still sometimes funny but realizing that it was never because I was just careless like I I mean yes I was just careless but I literally didn't have a I don't know I that is like something that I'm still trying to figure out how that really relates but I know that I'm not the only person who has ADHD who has experienced that so that's still something I'm trying to um, navigate and like literally try to figure out how I can be less clumsy and I mean I guess I could say it's worked a bit (laughs) Um, but yeah I mean and then okay I would get ready to go somewhere and like if I needed to do something, I would do it. And then I would think of something else I needed to do. And then something else. And then I would look down and see that I've wasted 20 of the 30 minutes I had to get ready that day. And I just, like, it would, it would get frustrating. And then I'm rushing to get out and get ready. And then I realized that the reason why I do that is because if I waited, like, if I had just come back to it another time, I never would have come back to it. So... It was just, like, these are, I feel like I'm rambling a bit, but I'm kind of just throwing out these ideas of things that would happen that then I reached a point and it was like, okay, this needs to change. And when I first explored the possibility of ADHD, I spoke to my therapist and it was suggested that we do some ADHD coaching. So... That looked a lot like making lists, using calendars, um, basically just building structure and routine uh, that would make it easier for me not to lose track. (sighs) Except I still felt so helpless because I would try, I would use all the techniques, and I would know that somebody would be holding me accountable for them. And I still could not follow through. There was still so much that was like slipping past me that I wouldn't realize until I would go into my session and talk about it. Um, And then, like, so, okay, so then I went from coaching for tendencies, which using, you know, like, that therapist didn't necessarily support me in the exploration of ADHD and and understanding whether or not that's something that I struggled with. Um, everything was referred to like a tendency and was for uh, months <laughs> um, and it I mean that was in itself was invalidating and it, it really did make me feel like I was solely responsible so I think during the time that I was only doing coaching I felt more responsible for my actions than I ever did and I didn't have like I just I kept telling myself that maybe it was just me like maybe it's not ADHD I just can't do it um And then I decided to, you know, go from coaching to seeking assistance for like a full evaluation because I, I just thought that something was off. I was like, I I can't be, it's, I'm trying my absolute best. I'm just not, it's not working out. Like I need to figure this out. Um, so I checked all over, like I used, um, psychology today. I used... I used it like I've used an app Zencare before. I used Google. Like I was just trying to figure out what's the best way for me, someone who doesn't have the best insurance, to get an ADHD evaluation because it is expensive and it is time consuming. Um, and I just had to. F- I, I was just you know looking it up. I I spent a little while looking it up. I had to consider the cost and everything. And it was it was it was overwhelming. But I came across. A telehealth system and it was fairly affordable it took insurance um, I'm also I'm happy to share I, I mean 
I'm happy to share what that telehealth system is for anyone who would like to know and anyone who would like it as a resource you can just send me a message and I'll let you know um but yeah so I went on there and I was able to set up an appointment for literally two days later um the assessment took you know two appointments and I felt so comfortable in that <laughs> um I you're also able to select your own doctor so um you kind of go through it shows you their profiles kind of like the same thing with psychology today but in its own like system and they also do preventative care and like a bunch of other stuff it's not just for ADHD assessments but that is one of their specialties on the app um so I went in I selected my own doctor and this doctor based on the experiences that was on their profile I just felt like it would be the best fit so set up the appointment got onto the appointment and she was so empathetic and like really didn't focus on the yes or no questions in evaluation which I appreciated endlessly because someone who works in uh, mental health and you know working with assessments yes or no tends to be very limiting so understanding things beyond yes or no because if I don't even fully understand the question how am I meant to answer it properly so I personally loved that I loved having that space to explore it in a way that was very personal Um, and this really just gave me the confidence that I was being properly assessed and that whatever came out of it would be accurate (sighs) but then obviously came the diagnosis and um it was pretty obvious I think um and you know it was relieving but then came the harder part and the harder part is medication and medication's not something I've ever been comfortable taking. Um, and, like, yeah, that includes Advil and allergy tablets. Like, I just, it's more of a sensory thing, um, which is another part to my ADHD is sensory and noise. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, taking myself out of it in my own, as a professional, like, I view medication as a last resort. So I knew that I had tried everything. And this really was getting in my way. So this, like, medication was my last resort. And as much as I wanted to keep coaching and I wanted to try that all out on its own, it wasn't working for me. So I decided to try medication. Medication itself, you know, it's a trial and error situation. So it might have worked and it might not have worked. And I would have, you know, still participating in a bit of coaching um, and trying to not just rely on being on medication to work with this stuff but yes trial and error Uh, I started off with medication it really didn't end up working for me and I was doing every two weeks like a check-in to kind of adapt to medication and see what would work best which I I loved I loved the consistent check-in and and making sure that you know the doctor understood where I was with everything um eventually we made it around to something that does work or that has been working um but again it is an adjustment process so that may or may not change um I just really think it's so important um especially understanding how medication works or doesn't work with ourselves because again not only are symptoms relevant to personal experience but medication does not work the same for everyone so if your doctor is, or should I keep this personal? If my doctor um, was prescribing me something that did not work with me, although may have worked with every other patient this doctor has worked with, then it's important for me to say, hey, like, I know you thought this would be the best, but it's not. Um, and at the same point where, like, I just made sure that I would always talk about any changes that I was experiencing, even if I wasn't 100% sure that it had anything to do with the medication um side effects and everything and like especially my ability to like get work done and keep up that was the biggest thing so not only was it how is this making me feel physically but is it doing what I need it to do um and it at first came across as if well I guess to me I, I felt like I was kind of telling this doctor like hey you don't know anything and and this isn't working and then I realized that it's not that it literally is this person is giving me outside advice 
and it is up to me to make sure that what I'm receiving is the best fit. Um, so here we are. It's been almost two months now. Things are improving, um, and I, I mean, I don't take medication every single day. I do have, um, you know, my vacation days, so to speak, because, of course, medication for ADHD um, does have addictive qualities, so it's very important to take breaks from the medication, so I do not take it daily, um, but when I do take it, it does work, um, so there's that, and again, that might change. It's, it's a matter of adjustment and seeing how my body reacts to it long term. But to close this off, there's an important question that I feel like everyone around me asked, um, and that question is, how do you feel now that you have this diagnosis? Truthfully, it feels good, but I think more importantly, it is confusing. I mean, okay, it's cliche, but it's true that sometimes knowing that it was always something bigger than just me or just my drive, my motivation, um, that gave me clarity. You know, knowing that I really was always trying my best and I wasn't just making excuses gave me kind of a, like almost like a sense of peace with how I deal with tasks and emotions and, you know, anxiety and, and just all of it. Um, and it, it is freeing. It takes off some of the weight and the responsibility, although I still do hold a lot of responsibility. It's just, it's been a ride, but I'm glad to be on one with a little bit more support at this time. Um, and I guess that really all this comes down to is I went through it. I've recognized how it's affected me my entire life. And now I'm working on it, and now things are getting better, and I'm excited to continue seeing things improve. And, you know, I just also want to say that my experiences were also not very severe, um, so the changes aren't, like, super noticeable to anyone else around me, but they're super noticeable to myself, which is the most important piece. Thank you for watching. I mean, well, not watching because this is now only audio. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for uh, giving me 30 minutes of your time. Uh, and I look forward to getting some cool stuff out there. And I feel like I say that all the time, but this time I really, truly do mean it. Thanks again.